chocolate decorations can take your cakes, desserts and slices up a notch. They're surprisingly easy and fun to make and will make your food look like you're a kitchen pro. Hi, I'm Taryn. Today we're going to make a simple cake, dessert and tart look fancy. We'll be melting some chocolate, creating a variety of designs and then picking the best suited design for each item here to make them look fancy. Your family and friends will love your efforts and think you've spent hours in the kitchen, but it's actually so quick and easy when you know how. In a couple of my other videos, I've talked about how to melt chocolate. Maybe you haven't seen those videos yet. It's quite straightforward. You could use a double boiler where you have a pot of simmering water under another bowl and melt the chocolate that way. When I worked in commercial kitchens, we permanently had chocolate like this, so it was always ready to use. At home, I find it's easiest to use a microwave. I usually make chocolate decorations from cheap chocolate chips. Chocolate decorations are more for looks, so you often only eat a small piece and hardly even taste the chocolate. Melt it in the microwave for 10 seconds at a time, giving it a good stir in between. It often doesn't take more than one minute all up. When you get to the last few lumps, just stirring it often helps to completely melt it. The heat in the chocolate helps to melt the last few bits. You don't want to put it back in the microwave and risk over melting it. Unfortunately, there's no rectifying burnt crumbly chocolate. There are a few ways you can create chocolate designs. I'd like to show you three different ways today. The first way is to pipe designs out on baking paper. The second way is to use acetate to create 3D curls. And the third way is a combination of piping and molding. Let's start with piping designs on baking paper. For this, we need to make a paper piping bag. Let's get a triangle of baking paper ready. You can't use a plastic piping bag for chocolate because it sets too quickly in the cold plastic bag. In the first video I ever uploaded, I talked about how to make a paper piping bag. I'll show it again. They're easy when you know how and so useful in the kitchen. You'd think that the point of our piping bag is this bit here, but the point is actually here and this part holds it all together. I usually put the right angled part of the triangle facing me, then curl over the shorter side. Bring the point roughly on top of this point here. Then take the longer side and curl it underneath, bringing the point to roughly the same spot as the other two. Now all you need to do is pull on the bottom piece of baking paper to close the piping bag tip here at the top. This is really important so the chocolate doesn't run straight out when you pour it in. Lastly, we'll fold over this bit to secure the bag. And I usually fold it a second time so that it won't easily lose its shape. Here it is, ready to fill. You need three hands for this. Or if you're like me and don't have three hands, try to hold the chocolate and the piping bag in one hand and spoon it in with the other. Or you can put it into a cup and fill it that way. I often make the mistake of overfilling my piping bag and then the chocolate oozes out everywhere. So I'm being careful not to do that today. Now I'll fold over the sides and then fold over the top a couple of times. You can see how the tip is nicely closed and no chocolate is running out. Now we're ready to cut the hole. Today I'm making finer decorations so a smaller hole will work best. Let's draw some freehand designs. You can keep them symmetrical or make them abstract. Remember when making designs they need some stability and strength. You can give this by letting the chocolate touch itself in a few places. If you don't give it stability, the design will break when you try to lift it. It's also helpful to have a nice solid base to stick into the dessert. You can see with this particular triangular design, it keeps coming back to the base and connects in a few places. Here's a more decorative version of the same triangular design. All I'm adding is a loop on the side. I love how you can really do anything with chocolate, and it looks amazing. Here's a little butterfly template. 
Putting a template underneath some baking paper is a great way to do more complex designs. Or it's a way of keeping designs exactly the same if you need several of them. You can make the wings separately and then stick them into a cupcake creating a 3D butterfly. It's so simple, yet so effective. You would also use this method to write on cakes, either straight onto the cake, or form the letters on baking paper and transfer them to your cake once they've set. To use up the last bit of chocolate in my piping bag, I often scribble out some chocolate, and then go back again on the diagonal. This then keeps in my chocolate container, and I can break off shards to garnish something really quickly if I need to. The second way I'm going to demonstrate making chocolate designs is to use acetate, which is a thin sheet of plastic. You can usually find them at stationery stores, and you can use them over and over. If you don't have any, you can use baking paper, but acetate is a little easier to work with because it's firmer, and it gives the chocolate a shinier finish. I'm going to make a large chocolate curl. To do this, you need a cylinder. You could use a cardboard tube from a paper towel roll or something similar, but I'm just going to roll a piece of acetate and tape it together into a tube. It'll make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to spread some chocolate onto a narrower piece of acetate, trying to keep it fairly thin and an even thickness throughout. Now we need to create the individual curls. I've got a pastry comb which is perfect for this job. But if you don't have one, you could use a fork or something similar. Drag it through the chocolate. And now comes the fun part. Carefully pick it up and slide it into the cylinder. Luckily, when the chocolate is soft, it's easy to bend and manoeuvre into the tube. You just want to be careful you don't let it fold over onto itself. Once it's in, twist it to form a tighter curled shape. Then leave the chocolate to completely set and harden in the cylinder. Now that it has set, you can pull it out of the cylinder and peel off the acetate. You'll end up with this lovely bunch of long, shiny chocolate curls. If the ends are joined, just break off the end piece and they'll separate fairly easily. Don't they look amazing? The last way I'm going to demonstrate how to make chocolate designs is to use a combination of piping and moulding. We need our piping bag of chocolate again, and some baking paper. I'm going to pipe lines over this little piece of baking paper. I want them going from edge to edge, so that's why I have a piece of baking paper underneath to catch the overflow. Don't throw these bits out, you can always remelt them and use them again another time. Now I can fold over the baking paper and join the ends, leaving the centre part rounded. You'll need to hold it for a few seconds, and then leave it to set and harden. It won't take very long. Carefully peel off the baking paper, and we've ended up with a looped strip, which we can break into smaller pieces to fit the size of our dessert. And now I'll show you one of my favourites. I've got a small piece of baking paper, and I'm going to pipe on the chocolate diagonally, leaving this part blank. It will become obvious why soon. Then I'll go back the other way, and give it some more stability and strength. Now we roll this up, starting at the chocolate end, and touching it just near the other end here. Hold it steady for a minute or two to let the chocolate set. Wow, that happened so fast. I'll do it again so you can see how it all came together. You don't want to roll it too tight, as it won't work. Make sure it only just overlaps a little at the end. Just like the others, we need to leave it to completely set and harden. Now that it is set, and don't rush to do this, make sure it really is properly set. It's time to unroll the baking paper and see the chocolate roll we've created. It will have stuck to the baking paper on the little overlap here, but just gently pull the baking paper, breaking off the overlap chocolate. And here it is. Isn't this such an amazing little chocolate roll? It's almost disappointing how easy it really is, when it looks so sophisticated. Okay, so we've got our designs, and here we've got our cake, dessert, and tart. Let's talk about the best designs for each item. 
This is all subjective, of course, and one day you might go for one look, and another day you might go for a different look. Let's start with the lemon posset. It looks great in the martini glass, and the dark chocolate will be a nice contrast with the light colour of this dessert, so we're off to a good start. Most of these designs would work, especially if I add a little piped cream here in the centre. I also have half a strawberry for colour. Strawberries add such a lovely burst of colour to any dessert, don't they? This could easily be served just like this, but let's add the chocolate. This triangular shape works, it'll create height, but maybe it's a little on the small side for the surface of this particular dessert. A shard of this one would look great on here as you can break it to any size you like. But since I have it today, I'm going to add the chocolate roll. Touching the dessert and leaning it up on the cream. What do you think? Has the chocolate garnish taken this simple dessert to something fancy? Let me know in the comments below. Next I've got these carrot cake squares with a thin layer of cream cheese icing. When plated all together like this, consistency is the key to it looking amazing. I'm going to add a rosette of the icing to each piece, starting in the same position and going in the same direction on each piece to keep it uniform. Then I'll add a few dried cranberries, pumpkin seeds and poppy seeds for colour. Then we'll finish them with our chocolate decorations. Which one should we use here? I think this round one would blend in with the seeds. Shards wouldn't be consistent enough as they'll all be different sizes. And this one just doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to go for these triangular shapes. Repetitive patterns look great on a plate like this. What do you think of this one? I think the garnish is great by itself, but adding the chocolate adds another whole level of complexity without too much more effort. Lastly, we have our chocolate tart. Such a decadent dessert. It would be a shame not to fancy it up a little. I'll start with a little raspberry coulis. Raspberry and chocolate is a perfect flavour combination and it gives a stark colour contrast. We could add a simple cream rosette and a small chocolate garnish like this one. Or this one would work well too. Or we could add one of these amazing curls to create lots of height and intrigue. And what about a mint tip to finish it off? What do you think? Are you going to give making chocolate curls a try? The other thing you can do with chocolate is make a template and trace tricky shapes. In this video here, I talk about how I made a flamingo cake using a template. It's such an easy way to create something that looks amazing. See you over there. Happy chocolating!